All right, so today we're going to take a look at our type of, types of chemical reactions lab. I'm going to start by turning on the gas to get the Bunsen burner going. All right, so as you can see, the Bunsen burner is lit. You adjust the flame just ever so slightly. All right, looks good. Okay, so reaction A is a decomposition reaction and it involves copper two carbonate. And I've got some copper two carbonate here in the test tube. I'll let you take a look at it. Observe the color. Maybe the state of matter it's in. Okay, give any kind of physical descriptions that you possibly can. Again, this is copper to carbonate. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my copper to carbonate and with my test tube holder, I'm gonna place the copper to carbonate into the flame and observe the chemical reaction that takes place. So we're gonna give it a few seconds. might be able to see that the, a reaction is currently taking place. Okay, notice the appearance of the copper two carbonate has changed. So I'll let you take another look after about 30 seconds or so of placing the copper to carbonate into the Bunsen burner. Um, you can visually see that the appearance of the copper to carbonate has changed, indicating that a chemical reaction, reaction has taken place. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this down for a little bit, let it cool off. And we're gonna move on to reaction B which is the synthesis reaction. And reaction B, we are gonna use a piece of magnesium ribbon, which I have here in my tongs. It's just a thin, flat piece of uh, magnesium strip that I'm gonna place into the flame. Uh, notice the appearance of it. Okay, be as descriptive and specific as possible. I'm going to go ahead and take the magnesium strip and I'm going to place it into the flame. And as I do so, I want you to observe any changes. So I hope you were able to see that one. That one was pretty obvious. I'll let you uh, record your descriptions um, after the appearance. I'll kind of give you a close up look. Here's that magnesium strip that was once metal. It's now and I lost it. Give me one second. Here it is again. on the evaporating dish. Okay, I'll let you describe it however you wish. Be as specific as possible. All right, now moving on to single replacement test tube C. All right, so in test tube C, I've got a dry test tube. <clears throat> or reaction C, single replacement. And inside the test tube, I'm gonna place a small piece of zinc. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here's a look at the piece of zinc. Okay, 
Be specific, describe it as best as you can. I'm gonna take the zinc. Actually, I'm gonna turn off my Bunsen burner for right now, I don't need it. All right, so I'm gonna take the zinc and I'm going to place it into the test tube. Now, in addition to the zinc at the bottom of the test tube, I am gonna add six molar concentration of hydrochloric acid, okay, until I have enough to cover up my zinc. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Okay. So I'll let you take a look at the reaction that is taking place. Once I have added the hydrochloric acid to the zinc, my uh, next reaction is the double replacement reaction. And I have that in test tube D here. Um, I'm going to place one dropper full of calcium chloride, which I have right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off yet again. Calcium chloride. So I'm going to take the calcium chloride. I'll let you take a closer look so you can record your observations of calcium chloride. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take a dropper pipette full. I'm going to place it into the test tube. Now I'm gonna take a pipette full of sodium carbonate, and this is the sodium carbonate. I'll let you take a look at it, make your observations, record any data. You notice that it looks very similar to the calcium chloride. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my dropper pipette. <clears throat> And I'm also going to place it in to the test tube, but I'm going to try to hold it a little closer so that you can see it. All right, so I've included the sodium carbonate into the test tube, and you can see the appearance has changed. Okay, and it's a little difficult to see through the camera but it appears as if some kind of a slushy powdery substance has formed and you can see the powder residue that's on the top of the test tube here as I turned it some of that powder is sticking to the side of the test tube So when I mix the two liquids together, it appears as if a solid is formed. So I'll let you record your observations, record your data. I'm gonna go ahead and place this back in the test tube rack. Okay, and reaction E is combustion, which we've already seen the duration of the lab, but I'll show you one more time. Combustion occurs when I have a fuel, a, carb a hydrocarbon, in this case, my hydrocarbon is methane that's coming out of the Bunsen burner. Um, when a spark is applied, combustion takes place. So right now I've got a combustion reaction of methane gas and oxygen gas that is producing carbon dioxide and water vapor. So a simple Bunsen burner, any kind of explosion, a flame, it is certainly a combustion reaction. So make sure that your data table is completed on the front, all five reactions before and after uh, appearances, and as well as the indication of a chemical reaction um, such as color change, precipitate formed, gas production, um, heat or light. And then on the back, proceed to complete the uh, chemical equations using the information in the data table as well as the questions 1 through 12.